So let's speak about your role in Parliament. What are you going to be focusing on specifically? Well, I'm in the Higher Education uh, Portfolio Committee as a Deputy Shadow Minister and my role primarily is to ensure that we have universal access to higher education, to quality higher education, um, further education and trainings, that we've, we fix the CETAs, the highly bureaucratic CETAs that have been failing. Um, if I can sum it up in a sentence, is to ensure that, number one, every South African has an opportunity to better themselves, that have the opportunity to gain skills, to further their education, um, and that by, uh, they should not be excluded from doing so just simply because they cannot afford it. So one of the big issues that I will be focus, focusing on personally is fighting and driving um, the call and the demand for free higher education for poor qualifying metrics to ensure that the debacle that happened at the beginning of this year where Dr. Bladen Zimande, really him and his department and his DG didn't plan adequately that 50% of students that um, were eligible to access financial aid um, could not receive it because of a shortfall and just uh, general inefficiencies. Um, but to ensure that that doesn't happen again, to ensure that our FED colleges, there's quality education taking place and that areas such as, for example, Ikuruleni that doesn't have any colleges, um, we are able to address um, that backlog and that we can fix the CETAs. And if we are able to, to achieve that, then we will grow our economy, then young people will have an opportunity, irrespective of the background or the, the, the circumstances that they are born into. And I believe that we would have taken a step forward in realizing an opportunity society. Right. The statistician general has um, just reported that less or just over 3% of black youths are going to university. And this is obviously something that you want to address. Well, that's a travesty. And if you try and diagnose that, you'll find that disadvantage in South Africa is very closely linked to race. Um, there's no denying that, and that is the uh, a background, the apartheid legacy that, that remains with us. And a lot of it has to do with the basic education system in particular. A child that comes from Soshin Guve should have the same quality of education than a child that comes from Santon, for example. That's not the case. We have one of the most unequal basic education systems in the world, in that Yes, the circumstances that you are born into largely dictate the quality of basic education that you get and that's going to dictate are you going to complete matric for example because we know that more than half of those that enter the schooling system don't, call, don't reach matric and don't get to write the matric exam are you going to get a bachelor pass um, one that is sufficient for you to uh, be admitted into further education and training or to increase your skills in the, for that matter and then once all of that is in place are you going to get funding because majority of our young people in this country cannot afford to access higher education and uh, financial uh, constraints should not be an inhibitor to young people having access to higher education. So we've done our research, we've fitted into our alternative budget, we know that we can make it work. Over the next five years we can implement 16 billion rand and uh, supplement that to the NESFAS budget. We can ensure that the entire cost of that loan is converted into a bursary so that it's a free education uh, essentially. The other issue that perhaps we are not mentioning yet today is even that young black South African that cannot afford, that does get NASFAS, um, when they qualify they leave with a debt. And I'm still waiting for someone to convince me why if you are born into an, a disadvantaged uh, uh, circumstances, why you should leave higher education uh, uh, institutions with a debt that's going to hold you back and prevent you from uh, contributing to the economy, while someone else from a privileged background won't have to do that. I, I think that is a travesty. Um, higher Education South Africa notes in its report that for every one rand that government commits to higher education, there is one rand up to one rand ninety that it receives back in revenue and up to eleven rand ninety that the economy grows. This is an investment that we can't wait any longer to invest in as a government.